Barbara? Morning, Bob. Nice day today? Yes, it's quite nice. Messages. Come in. Hi, Bob. Oh, hi, Mark. Have a seat. I'll be with you in a second. I'm uh, just looking through these messages. Oh, gosh, there's one from the head of department. He wants a report on the MSC course today. I'll have to get on to that. Did, did Sam leave anything for us last night? Gosh, I don't know. Oh, yes. Uh, gosh, it looks like there may be one here. Uh-huh. Mm. Mm. Hmm, I don't know that I like the look of that peak there very much. No, I don't either. I think uh, I'll leave him a, me a message on that one. Say, uh, check this. Yes. Yeah. I hope I'll be able to make use of some of that in my uh, tolerance analysis. I, I think you should, yes. How's that work going on? Well, I, I just need one or two more references. Yes, if I could just have one more reference on manufacturing efficiency. Right, I know just the one you need in the transactions here. Let's see, I think it's in 78. No, it must be in 77, July. Yes, the one by director. Yes, that's it. Ah, uh, yes, good. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I'll leave a copy of that in your um, uh, pigeonhole. Copy. Oh, well, thanks, Bob. I'll be able to get on with that now. Fine, you're welcome. Okay. Come in. Hello, oh, Barbara. Hello. I found the article that Bob was looking for. It's this one here. Okay, I'll take a copy and put it back in your picture. Okay, fine. Bob Spence. Ah, oh, good morning. Joe Vogt here, Bonanza ah. Travel. Ah, hi, Joe. About your overseas trip in April. Now, we're still waiting for a date for your Chicago, New York flight. Oh, yes, I've got my itinerary here. Now, it's around about the 24th. I'm in New York. Yes, here we are. Yeah, Wednesday the 22nd would be best, because that gives me a free day in New York. Uh, a morning flight? Yes, that's fine. Good. Well, we'll put you on the 925 Continental flight. Uh, we'll send you the details with your tickets. OK, thanks. Was that all? Uh, yes, we've all the details now. Goodbye. OK, bye-bye. Uh, where was I? Yeah. Recall. I'm just off to lunch, Bob. Oh, OK, Barbara. Have a good lunch. See I'll you. see you later, then. OK. Gosh, I didn't realise it was that time. I feel a bit hungry. Ah, <laughs> oh, Mark. 
Um, I've got a student, I think, who's interested in that new project uh, of ours. Oh, that's good news. Now that the uh, graphics project's well underway, are we ready to start some serious work on that? Yes? Oh, hi. Um, you've got that report ready. Um, look, I'm busy now. I wonder if you could come back in half an hour, OK? Fine. Who was that? Oh, gosh. Do you know, I know his face and I don't know his name. Um, we better have a look in the uh, departmental records here. Uh, he's a third year student here. Let's see. Yes. No. no. Ah, there is Brian Thompson. Yes, I think he's on his uh, way to quite a good degree. Let's have a look. Oh, yes. Yes, he's doing quite well, isn't he? There's another one from the Southampton. Half hour third year class seems to come from there. <laughs> yes, last year they all seemed to come from Birmingham. Right, I wonder if it's uh, a trend. Well, there ought to be something in the departmental records. So. Okay, that'll be in the uh, departmental records here. And I suppose under geographical distribution, um, well, we're certainly right about Southampton mm. this year. I wonder if it's a trend. Yes, numbers have been steadily increasing for the last mm. five years. And look what's been happening to uh, the intake from Wales at the same time. Yeah, I think I'll mention this to Derek. Mm. I think he might want to look into it. Mm. Um, telex, uh, let's say note, trend in uh, Southampton intake. Uh, it was 1975. Seven, to eight. Mm. Send. Now you're saying we've got to take mm. it for the Teletouch project? Yes, in fact he's very keen. He's coming to see me about it tomorrow. Uh, what shall I show him? Well, why don't we just take what we've already got and put it in a new file for him? Okay, uh, now we made some notes on my whiteboard mm. here. When was it? Last Thursday? About then, I think. Yes. I'm sure it was Thursday. I know. I had it saved. Mm. Oh, this must be it on a Friday, mm. the one I haven't mm. labelled. That's the one. Yeah, that's the one. Mm. Uh, we'll save that mm. one. Yeah, save. Then there was that article that Martin found in electronics. Have you got that? That's right. Uh, Barbara copied it this morning. It'll be in my in-tray here. She usually marks papers green. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that must be it. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's yes. it. Save. Now, there's just that bibliography of yours. Uh, where did I put that? Uh, it's in your co op project file. I think. Oh, that's oh. right. Uh, here. Let's see, under Tally Touch and uh, bibliography. Yes, that's right. Save. How are you going to create a new file for this one? Yes, I think we'll keep it separate from the main project. New file. Let's make it, uh, oh, red one. Okay. Oh, gosh. Oh, here. Use mine. Oh, okay, thanks. And we'll call that the um, Teletouch. Project. Now, what have we got again? Recall. Oh, yes, let's call that notes. Notes. And then recall. Yeah, let's say electronics. And finally. Recall, yes, let's call that bibliography. Okay. Oh, well, let's see the uh, file. Fine. Where do you want it? Up here somewhere? Uh, yes, that's okay. I'll uh, turn um, up there for you. File.
How about tea? Good idea. Good. Was that all you wanted to discuss? Yes, I think so. Uh, what about that library meeting in Loughborough next week? Aren't we supposed to arrange some transport? That's right, we've got to do something about yeah, that. Okay. A train? Yes, you'll find a timetable in here. Ah, yes, now let's see. We want travel and uh, rail travel uh, from London. That better be British Rail, I suppose. Uh, L for uh, Loughborough. Now, what time are we supposed to be here? Meeting starts at te uh, 12. Hmm, that's annoying. The uh, 901 arrives at 10.54, and the next train doesn't get in until 12.27, which is a bit late. What about uh, hiring a car? Then we could stop at uh, Leicester and see the work they're doing on graphics. Hmm, it's worth a try. I'll just check the fare first. It's um, 1770 return. Now for the car hire. Now let's see, we want uh, UK car hire. Uh, car hire centre, that'll do. Now let's see, a Ford? Yeah, sure. Okay. Now well, we could get an escort for 650 plus uh, 6 p a mile. Now, I can't do this in my head. Oh, use my calculator here. Uh, right, now uh, how far is it to Loughborough? I'll we'll say 115 miles. OK, that's uh, 115 times uh, 6p times uh, 2 uh, plus the um, 650. And about uh, 150 insurance. OK, that's so that's plus uh, 150. And I suppose we have better have about 14% VAT. Mm -hmm. Okay, now that's um, £24.85 compared with about £35 for the two of us on the train. Right, I think we'll do that. Okay, um, we better let them know when we're coming. Yes, you'll need my directory here. Okay, um, Shackle. Yep, yeah, Shackle. Right. Oh, hello. You have just seen a scenario depicting a possible information system oriented to the professional user. You may wonder why that particular scenario was chosen, especially since some aspect of it might have appeared a little futuristic. There are, first, two very straightforward reasons. One is to illustrate the value of the bifocal display by placing it within the context of a working system. The other is to advocate a style of human-computer interaction that is based on instinctive human skills, those we've had for most of our lives, rather than taught skills. No one wants to learn a new skill involving complicated keyboard commands just to use an information system. Indeed, we emphasized this philosophy by not including a keyboard in the scenario. Not because it wouldn't ever be needed, 
but to make the point that a great deal can be achieved very easily without one. But there were other reasons for creating the scenario. It was futuristic, yes, but the future has a habit of happening next Wednesday afternoon, and it's essential when thinking about information systems not to be too rigidly constrained by current attitudes. Already, just two years after the scenario was taped, we are seeing a greater emphasis on the use of icons, on the use of instinctive skills, and an enhanced graphical content. Thus, I maintain that the tape provides food for thought. It does so, I think, for two groups of people. One comprises students of information technology. They, I think, can learn a lot by critically evaluating the human-computer interaction depicted in that tape. The other group is made up from those who conduct research into human-computer interaction and those who design this interaction within commercial systems. Because the more you examine some of the effects depicted in that tape, the more interesting the questions and conclusions that emerge. For example, does the bifocal display offer the means of achieving a large menu? Does the perceived continuity of information space ease the database navigation task? Many such questions are raised, the answers to which would materially influence our understanding and future implementation of information systems. To conclude, I would comment that the taped scenario was not intended as the description of a commercially viable system. Such specifications are the task of industry. Rather, it was intended for those responsible for defining the directions of future developments in information systems as food for thought. In offering this food for thought, I wish you bon appétit.